Thank you for inviting me to share some thoughts with you this evening. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but I'm honored to be here at least in a virtual sense. This innovation convention is an important milestone in the development of the Europe 2020 agenda, and I'd like to congratulate the Commissioner on her vision and continuing commitment to innovation during these demanding economic times. The Innovation Union flagship challenges everyone to think how research and development is done in Europe. It brings new energy to the discussion of how Europe can become even more competitive on the global stage. While I can't be with you in Europe today, Microsoft most definitely is. We've been doing business across Europe for nearly 30 years, and we share many of your goals around R&D, innovation, and helping build the EU's future information economy. As you've been discussing at this convention, information and communications technology is changing how the world innovates. We're at the beginning of an extraordinary time in computing, a new era that will transform how we interact with computers and what we can expect from them. Exponentially more powerful devices, cloud services, big data, and network communication are together opening up a world of possibilities. In the coming years, computers will become less like tools and more like helpful collaborators. As a result, billions more people will be able to use and benefit from computing systems. One example of how this is starting to come about is Kinect, an enhancement to Microsoft's Xbox gaming console. It's a sensor that can recognize your face, understand your body movements, and respond to your voice. You can play games or control a TV simply by moving and speaking without holding a controller. We launched Kinect last year, and people quickly embraced this new way to interact, but the possibilities go far beyond entertainment. We've now made it possible for anyone who has a PC to create their own Kinect-based projects. I'd like to show you a few we've put together to give you an idea of some of the creativity we're seeing worldwide. Here's someone creating a multi-screen display system that they can control with their gestures and voice. Here we have the worldwide telescope on a large display being controlled, uh, navigating through the universe just using gestures. So here you have someone using gestures and voice to distort their video. Here's somebody using Connect to interpret American Sign Language. The text is essentially uh, recognized by using the Connect to do the sign recognition. Here somebody's taken an anthropomorphic robot and mapped their own body movements onto the robot in real time. Here's a, a human-robot collaboration where uh, the robot's being taught to avoid touching humans. This is a safety issue that people are exploring. And this one's interesting, done in Europe by some German students uh, to create a, an assist for the visually impaired, where Connect and a laptop basically supplements their traditional cane-based navigation. So you can see that Connect has sparked a vast range of imaginative applications, and it's only the first of these types of technologies. What computers can do for us is also undergoing tremendous change, especially in terms of helping us gain insight from big data. Massive volumes of data are becoming available in the cloud, and we're creating new ways to process and analyze it. We can now also apply machine learning to data to get insights that were previously impossible. For example, we took data from nearly 10 years of patient admissions at a Washington, D.C. hospital and used machine learning to answer the question, what makes someone more likely to be readmitted to the hospital? We got detailed answers that no person, however expert, would be able to detect such as if you're admitted for congestive heart failure, you have a higher probability of returning if you've been diagnosed with clinical depression or if you've been taking drugs for a gastrointestinal disorder. With this kind of information, we're able to create a predictive model to apply to current patients, enabling the hospital staff to take preventative actions and reduce costs. Technology shifts like natural user interfaces and big data will enable more people to benefit from the power of computing and will enable our ability to innovate at regional and global scales. The global innovation economy is clearly taking shape in many countries and regions. Around the world, companies and institutions are increasingly collaborating across borders to bring new ideas to market more efficiently, a trend that will greatly improve economic and social well-being. But there's both good news and bad news here. The good news is that technology is making it easier to collaborate, and R&D efforts are evolving to encourage the exchange of ideas and intellectual property throughout the process. 
a phenomenon the Innovation Union and others are calling open innovation. All this is helping new products get to market faster. The bad news is that government policies, for the most part, haven't evolved to support this new model. The Commissioner has identified some key areas for Europe that can be addressed by the Innovation Union flagship, such as sustaining a reliable stream of world-class research. Microsoft wholeheartedly supports these efforts. In a competitive marketplace, there's a temptation to focus on ideas that have obvious near-term applications and to emphasize applied research over basic, curiosity-driven research. That might mean taking fewer risks, but it often results in only incremental innovation. On the other hand, investments in basic research can lead to breakthroughs that open up new and unexpected opportunities. For example, to create Connect, Microsoft tapped into the existing work of its research labs, including our lab in Cambridge, England, to overcome deep technical challenges in a very short time. But the greatest advantages come from a mixed approach, combining basic research with the diversity of ideas and inventions from external sources, whether they're startups, innovation centers, universities, or industry partners. To me, one of the key questions before the EU is whether Europe will continue going down the path of creating institutes to bridge the gap between research and industry, or will it focus more on developing research universities? Europe needs well-educated workforces that can rapidly develop new technologies into products, which I know is a core goal of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. But Europe can become even more competitive in the global economy by increasing its sources of consistent, high-quality, basic research. Research universities, in particular, play a dual role of engaging in basic research and educating the workforces of the future. There are also places where disciplines intermingle, and it's becoming increasingly clear that an interdisciplinary approach is required, not only to be competitive, but also to tackle complex world problems like education, health care, energy, and the environment. There are no simple answers, but the EU is in an excellent position to tap its rich history of invention, its large market, its traditions of innovation, creativity, and diversity that have made Europe great. By pulling these strengths together, the Innovation Union can be a game changer for the European economy. One other thing is certain. Collaboration is crucial, and we're going to need better ways to meet and work together in the future. There's a new service called Avatar Connect on Xbox Live that hints at some of these possibilities. Over 30 million people around the world already have Xbox avatars to represent themselves online. And Avatar Connect lets up to eight people socialize together in a single virtual environment, no matter where they are physically. You can recognize facial expressions, and you operate your avatar simply by moving and talking. Today, this is just for entertainment, but it's interesting to think about how something like that might be used in a business setting. Actually, instead of just thinking about it, let me show you.